Welcome my dear learners for this course on mechanical vibrations. In this module 2 we are discussing on forced vibration. So far we have discussed the system response for forced vibration system subjected for harmonic excitation and also we have discussed the rotating and reciprocating unbalance. Moving ahead in today's lecture let us discuss support motion. That is whenever you observe the automobiles that is car, motorcycles etc. When we ride the motorcycles or car on the road, the irregularities present on the road will cause external excitation for the wheels. The excitation of wheels will cause excitation for the chassis. So that will cause vibration of the automobile. Correct. So therefore, the excitation is transmitted from irregularities present in the road to the wheels of the vehicle and from the wheels to the chassis of the vehicle which is felt to the passengers. Now, you know to analyze the automobiles the concept of motion that is absolute as well as relative motion is very very important so therefore in forced vibration analysis one should know the expression for amplitude of vibration when the vibration amplitude is measured with, refer with reference to fixed reference as well as with reference to relative reference so therefore in support motion i am going to derive expression for amplitude of vibration with reference to absolute support as well as with reference to relative support. What do you mean by absolute and relative? The motion of one body with reference to another body measured when both the bodies are in motion is termed as relative motion. This you people already know. Now, if I measure the amplitude of vibration with reference to earth that is the fixed reference then it is called as absolute motion. If I measure the amplitude of vibration with reference to moving object that is in case of measuring instruments we place the measuring instrument on a vibrating object the object is also vibrating and the motion indicated by the measuring instrument that is vibration measuring instrument that is seismic device is also vibrating so therefore the object of interest on which we have placed the seismic instrument is also vibrating and the seismic instrument is also vibrating so since the vibration of the seismic instrument is measured with reference to vibrating object the motion of one body with reference to another body is measured when both are in set to motion so therefore that is, there exists relative motion between the measuring instrument and the vibrating object so therefore the concept of relative motion is very very important in designing the seismic devices that is vibration measuring instruments so therefore relative motion plays a major role in designing the seismic devices Seismic devices are nothing but vibration measuring instruments. By knowing the importance of absolute motion and relative motion, in today's lecture I am going to derive expression for amplitude of vibration whenever we measure amplitude with reference to fixed reference, whenever we measure amplitude with reference to moving reference. That is the concept of today's discussion is support motion. Under support motion, first let me discuss absolute motion. That is, this concept is important whenever I analyze the amplitude of vibration of automobiles. <coughs> now, in order to analyze this, let us consider the support. Let me have a support like this. Let us have a support like this. Let the support is moving by an amount y where y is given by b sin omega t. So this is support. Now we have the spring and we have the dashpot and we have the object, vibrating object. Let us have the vibrating object which is displaced by an amount x. Now <coughs> we have spring stiffness k and damping coefficient c. So this is the object which is vibrating with an 
displacement of x x is given by a sin omega t x is given by a sin omega t now i am interested to determine the ratio a by b now for absolute motion if i consider the absolute motion now the absolute motion of mass the absolute motion of mass is equal to x which is a sin omega t now the absolute motion of support is equal to y which is given by b sin omega t now the relative motion now the relative motion of the mass the relative motion of the mass b equal to z that is z is equal to x minus y now i am interested to determine the ratio a by b correct now if i draw the equation of motion before that what is the net elongation of spring and the net effect of deflection of net velocity acting on the dash pot what is the net velocity acting on the dash pot and what is the net elongation of spring the net elongation of spring and the net velocity acting on the dash pot will become what the net elongation or compression the net elongation of spring will be x minus y whereas the net velocity of dash pot will be x dot minus y dot correct x dot minus y dot now we know that for equilibrium for equilibrium sum of forces must be equal to zero what are the forces acting inertia force of mass spring force and dash pot force due to dash pot correct that is inertia force of mass that is mx double dot mass times the acceleration then spring force before that let me take dash damping force damping force is damping coefficient times the velocity what is the net velocity i should consider it is net velocity is x dot minus y dot plus spring force that is kx that is k into x minus y this must be equal to zero for equilibrium the sum of forces acting must be equal to zero inertia force plus damping force plus spring force must be equal to zero where x is the displacement of mass absolute displacement of mass acceleration is x double dot hence inertia force is mass times the acceleration coming for dash pot the damping force is damping coefficient times the velocity here the net velocity is x dot minus y dot therefore the damping force will become c into x dot minus y dot here the net compression or elongation is x minus y hence the spring force is spring stiffness times the deflection now if i resolve this what i am going to get mx double dot plus cx dot plus kx will be equal to cy dot plus ky correct now what is the value of y y is equal to b sin omega t so therefore if i simplify further what i am going to get mx double dot plus cx dot plus kx is equal to derivative of b sin omega t c times omega b omega cos omega t plus k times y is b sin omega t correct now this can be written as mx double dot plus cx dot 
plus kx is equal to I will take b common so if I take b common I can write this as k sin omega t k sin omega t plus c omega cos omega t plus c omega cos omega t now what I will do I will multiply and divide by square root of b times square root of k square plus c omega square divided by square root of k square plus c omega square I multiply and divide by this term this is because of the reason I want to get an expression which is somewhat similar to the expression which we have already derived which helps us in conducting vibration analysis if I have n number of different equations then it will become very difficult and tedious for me to remember for that what we should do we should derive the expression such a way that the expressions must be similar with minor changes then it will be easy for me to recollect and apply and solve for the particular applications so therefore this simplification is necessary you know to bring down the solution similar to the expression which we have already derived that is magnification factor or amplitude ratio and also we have derived expression for reciprocating and rotating unbalance so the expression what we are going to derive must be somewhat similar to the expressions which we have already derived so therefore this multiplication and division is necessary now into what you will get into k sin omega t plus c omega cos omega t clear now further simplification will yield us mx double dot plus cx dot plus kx is equal to square root of k square plus c omega square into b here I can write this as k divided by root of k square plus c omega whole square sin omega t plus c omega divided by root of k square plus c omega whole square cos omega t now I want to bring down bring this into the form sin a cos b plus cos a sin b I want to bring down to the form sin a cos b plus cos a sin b so therefore this should be equal to what cos theta and this must be equal to sin theta how it can be made that is you know to bring down to the form of sin a cos b plus cos a sin b now I want to construct a triangle such a way that I will get the required thing that is I will construct a triangle like this let I will take the angle as alpha now this must be equal to cos alpha correct what is cos alpha cos alpha is adjacent by hypotenuse so hypotenuse should be square root of k square plus c omega square hypotenuse adjacent should be k now we observe this can be written as sin alpha sin alpha is opposite by hypotenuse hypotenuse is correct opposite should become c omega opposite should become c omega now i can introduce sin, sin alpha and cos alpha correct so therefore if I introduce that what I will get mx double dot plus cx dot plus kx will be equal to b into root of k square plus c omega whole square into sin omega t cos alpha plus cos omega t sin alpha I got what I was expecting clear now this is of the form sin a cos b plus cos a sin b so hence this can be written as sin of a plus b so further simplification will become what b times square root of k square plus c omega square into sin of omega t plus 
sin of omega t plus alpha. So that is mx double dot plus cx dot plus kx is equal to this is what I got. Right. Now compare this equation with reference to equation of forced vibration. That is recollecting equation of forced vibration what we have from equation of motion from equation of motion of forced vibration of forced vibration we can write mx double dot plus cx dot plus kx is equal to f naught sin omega t correct now compare these two equations so what is the amplitude of force f naught will be equal to b into root of k square plus c omega square correct f naught will be equal to b into root of k square plus c omega square so this is somewhat similar to the equation of motion of forced vibration for equation of motion of forced vibration we know what is the system response we have done the complete derivation of system response and also phase phase angle expression in our first lecture of this module in module 2 in very first lecture we have derived equation of motion and what is the system response for this so since this expression is similar to this expression recalling the magnification factor or amplitude ratio equation so recall the expression what we derived for amplitude ratio recall amplitude ratio expression recollecting amplitude ratio expression that is a is equal to f naught by k into 1 divided by root of 1 minus omega by omega n whole square whole square plus 2 zeta omega by omega n whole square correct now what is the value of f naught f naught is equal to b into root of k square plus c omega square correct instead of f naught i can place it as b into root of k square plus c omega square so therefore substitute substituting substituting f naught is equal to b into root of k square plus c omega whole square c omega whole square i will get a is equal to a is equal to b into take k outside k into root of 1 minus c omega by k whole square divided by k whole divided by whole divided by root of 1 minus omega by omega n whole square whole square plus 2 zeta omega by omega n whole square correct this is the expression what i am going to get now i can cancel off k what i have done i have done the substitution for f naught and took k outside that's it nothing else and simplified further now I can take the ratio a by b and also I can make substitution for c omega by k. What is c omega by k? c omega by k can be written as c by cc into cc by 2m into 2m by k into omega. Correct? Now this can be written as c by cc is c by cc is zeta into cc by 2m cc by 2m is omega n into 2 by 
omega n square into omega so which is nothing but 2 zeta omega by omega n which is nothing but 2 zeta omega by omega n correct note down this simplification so hence what is the amplitude ratio for the amplitude ratio for absolute motion will be a by b is equal to a by b is equal to square root of 1 minus 2 zeta omega by omega n whole square divided by square root of 1 minus omega by omega n whole square whole square plus 2 zeta omega by omega n whole square so now if i know what is the amplitude of support amplitude of vibration of support that is b <coughs> and if i know what is the damping ratio and the frequency ratio i can find what is the amplitude of vibration of mass m right so this is the expression for amplitude ratio of absolute motion now what is the unknowns here alpha is one more unknown i want to know and what is the value of phi now phi is already known phase difference so tan phi formula is already known tan phi is given by 2 zeta omega by omega n divided by 1 minus omega by omega n whole square whereas i don't know what is the value of alpha right so alpha is given from this triangle hence tan alpha tan alpha will become what c omega by k tan alpha is equal to opposite by adjacent c omega by k what is c omega by k 2 zeta omega by omega n that is c omega by k which is nothing but 2 zeta omega by omega n 2 zeta omega by omega n so we have expression for tan phi expression for tan alpha expression for amplitude ratio for absolute motion let me pause this video for a while so that you people can copy it down later we will discuss relative motion Now moving ahead, so far we have derived expression for absolute motion that is displacement transmissibility ratio for absolute motion that is a by b is equal to the expression given here where a is the absolute displacement of mass and b is the absolute displacement of support. Using this analysis I can solve problems on forced vibration on automobiles. Now moving ahead. I am going to derive expression for relative motion which will be helpful for analyzing of vibration measuring instrument that is seismic devices because the seismic devices are placed on the vibrating object this seismic devices will also record the amplitude of vibrating object since the vibrating object is already vibrating and the measurement is made with reference to the vibrating body hence the measurement what is made by the measuring instrument will be relative in nature because it is not measuring with respect to the fixed reference so therefore relative motion analysis plays a major role in designing the measuring instruments that is vibration measuring instruments which are termed as seismic devices now we have derived expression for displacement transmissibility for absolute motion and also if i recollect the total response total response the total response is given by what x is equal to transient solution that is complementary solution plus steady state that is particular solution this complementary solution is already known for us which is nothing but solution of underdamped vibrating system whereas particular solution particular solution will be of the form x p is equal to x sin omega t is the general equation what we had but now if you compare here the magnitude is b sorry the amplitude of mass is a 
a sin omega t but here we are not having sin omega t here we having sin of omega t plus alpha is the value of theta minus phi if i go for relative motion what happens relative motion what happens coming for relative motion as we all know relative relative displacement of mass is nothing but z which is given by z is equal to x minus y now from the same figure if i write sum of forces is equal to 0 so now for equilibrium from figure sum of forces must be equal to 0 right therefore it is mx double dot plus relative c dead dot plus kz must be equal to 0 now i want relative displacement to be introduced here for mass acceleration also since z is equal to x minus y what is the value of x x will be equal to z plus y correct since relative motion z is equal to x minus y x is equal to z plus y correct so make the substitution here it will become what m of z double dot plus y double dot bracket close plus c dead z dot plus k z is equal to 0 z is nothing but relative motion or relative displacement of the mass now if i rearrange the equation i will get m z double dot plus c z dot plus k z is equal to minus m y double dot now what is the value of m y double dot now what is the value of y now y is already known y is equal to b sin omega t that is the excitation so therefore y double dot will become what y double dot will be equal to minus b omega square minus b omega square sin omega t minus b omega square sin omega t make the substitution if i make the substitution what i am going to get mz double dot plus c dead dot plus kz is equal to mb omega square sin omega t now compare this equation recollect the expressions what we have derived so far from our lecture 1 and lecture 2 so this is similar to what if you recollect this is similar to reciprocating and rotating unbalance correct this is equation is similar to rotating and reciprocating unbalance if you recollect so therefore if i recall the amplitude ratio so this equation is similar to this equation is similar to rotating and reciprocating unbalance what is that rotating and reciprocating unbalance that is mx double dot plus cx dot plus kx is equal to m naught omega square e sin omega t for this we, we people already know what is the amplitude ratio that is a by m naught e by m is equal to omega by omega and omega by omega and whole square divided by square root of 1 minus omega by omega and whole square whole square plus 2 zeta omega by omega and whole square that is the solution for this equation which i have clearly discussed in our previous lecture so this and the relative motion are same correct so here what is the value of f so here the value of f so recalling amplitude ratio
if i recollect amplitude ratio for forced vibration subjected to harmonic excitation which we have discussed in our lecture 1 that is the basis for all the expressions what we are going to derive so lecture 1 plays a major role where in which we have derived amplitude ratio or mag magnification factor for forced vibration due to harmonic excitation where the amplitude ratio is given by a is equal to f not by k divided by square root of 1 minus omega by omega n whole square whole square plus 2 zeta omega by omega n whole square now what is the value of amplitude of force f not f not is m not omega square e so make substitution so therefore amplitude a will become f not is nothing but m not omega square sorry that is for rotating and reciprocating unbalance but we are discussing relative motion for relative motion so let us take this as equation 1 from equation 1 what is the value of f f is equal to mb omega square f is equal to what mb omega square mb omega square by k mb omega square by k divided by root of 1 minus omega by omega n whole square whole square plus 2 zeta omega by omega n whole square because f equals f not sin omega t from equation 1 f not is equal to mb omega square now if i simplify what i am going to get here the, for us the amplitude is what we are not using x we are using z so therefore amplitude should be z instead of a correct instead of a i should have z kindly make a note so this is general expression for which i am making substitution here we are not using x if this equation is mx double dot plus cx dot plus k is equal to f sin omega t then the ratio will become a is equal to f not by k this one but here i am not using x i am using z relative displacement so for relative displacement the relative amplitude is z so therefore z is equal to this equation is what i am going to get now making substitution and rearranging the terms what is the value of amplitude ratio or displacement ratio hence displacement ratio will be hence displacement ratio displacement ratio z by b z by b is equal to k by m can be written as omega n square right so therefore i can write it in this as omega by omega n whole square through divided by square root of 1 minus omega by omega n whole square whole square plus 2 zeta omega by omega n whole square so this is the expression for displacement or amplitude ratio for relative motion if you compare the displacement ratio for relative motion as well as for absolute motion the only difference is the numerator the numerator is root of 1 minus 2 zeta omega by omega n whole square for absolute displacement whereas for relative displacement the numerator is omega by omega n whole square now i want expression for phase lag now expression for phase lag as usual let the phase lag be phi so therefore tan phi is already known for us tan phi is 2 zeta omega by omega n divided by 1 minus omega by omega n whole square so this is the complete discussion for displacement or amplitude ratio for base excitation 
for absolute motion and for relative motion so these two expressions are basis a by b and z by b are the basis for analyzing problems on automobile problems on seismic instruments here z is relative displacement of mass where b is the relative absolute displacement of support displacement of support and a is the absolute displacement of mass so a is absolute displacement of mass b is absolute displacement of support where z is the relative displacement so this is what we are going to read from the seismic devices hope the concept is clear that's all from this lecture thank you all